So we're going to tackle this big chip here today. Uh, this is a 145152. We'll look at the data sheet. But uh, let's talk about the functionality that this has to perform, okay? So we've showed that we have a VCO here, which is a voltage controlled oscillator. So we're trying to generate a, a, a VHF a frequency. Let's say it's 144 megahertz. We need that 144 megahertz. And we do that by putting a voltage on these uh, varactor diodes. So we want, we want a voltage that is, matches 144 megahertz. Well, that's gonna be really hard to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sample some of that volt, some of that frequency, okay? That's what this uh, prescaler does, allows us to sample that, that frequency. And then we're gonna monitor it. You can imagine we have a microprocessor and it looks at that frequency and it says, are you too high, are you too low? And then it sends a voltage to the signal here. So if you're too high, then you lower that voltage. And if you're too low, you, you raise that voltage, okay? So that's the functionality of what this is gonna have to do. Now, it's gonna have to do two different things, okay? It's going to have to measure the frequency that we have, and then it's gonna to have to compare it to a frequency that we want, okay? And then it's gonna to have to take a difference, right? Well, what is this thing here? Well, it's a differential amplifier. So that will take the difference part of it, okay? What we want is to look at how do we measure the frequency that we have and compare it to a frequency that we want. Well, we have to generate a frequency that we want, all right? So part of this is gonna be generating a frequency and part of it's gonna be comparing that frequency to, to what we have, all right? So let's take a look at the data sheet. All right, so we have the 145152. It is a phase lock loop frequency synthesizer. So we're gonna be synthesizing a frequency and we're gonna be comparing it or locking it to the frequency that we have. It's gonna compare the two, right? Uh, this is a block diagram, which is uh, written really terrible. I'm gonna rewrite that. We'll, we'll do that in a second, but let's take, let's take a look at this thing. Um, let's see, this, this data sheet is for two different parts, the, the 151 and the 152, and they are quite, quite a bit different. So let's skip ahead to the 152. Uh, where is the 152? Uh, skip, skip too far. All right. Uh, so here is the 152. Uh, it is a parallel input. All right. And the parallel input is going to be a binary code that we tell it what frequency that we want, and then it's going to synthesize that frequency. That's the synthesizer part of it. All right. All right, it says that it uh, has a whole bunch of ranges and it's very complex. It's equivalent to 8,000 FETs or 2,000 equivalent gates. So yeah, it's a pretty, pretty fancy chip. Um, let's see here. All right, so here's a block diagram of the chip. And don't be worried if you, if you can't figure this one out, we'll, we'll go through it. Um, there's a local oscillator and then a divider. So we need to synthesize. So the top half is that we need to synthesize the frequency that we want. So we're going to take some oscillator and then we're going to divide it down. So if we don't, if, if we don't like this, we'll divide it down by the amount that we want. And then we will get the, uh, we will get the uh, right frequency. Now it's an eight bit divide by R counter, um, a 12 bit, I'm sorry, 12, 12 bit divided by R counter. Uh, so it has a numerator and a denominator, and um, we can synthesize a frequency, okay? So that's, the top part is, f is, a, is a generating the frequency that we want, and then the bottom part is just a bunch of weird things. The frequency that we have comes in here, you can do certain things with it, and then it's going to compare the two. So again, generate something we want, compare it with something we have, and then look at the difference. And so there's a phase detector here that looks at the difference. It is, is one bigger than the other. And uh, that will tell us if we're going too fast or too slow, right? And then if we are in phase lock, then you can light up an LED or something and say, hey, there's lock detect, and, and, and you can do that. Um, there is a typical application drawing and this typical application drawing is exactly what we have in our radio. 
Um, it is exactly, it's the same crystal, it's the same part, it's the same uh, filter, uh, same prescaler. And so they basically just took this application and used that as their, as their basis of, of designing their radio, okay? Synthesizer for land, mobile radio, VHF bands, perfect, right? And so a lot of times, uh, you know, my experience is that engineers are pretty lazy and if they can just copy something, they're just gonna copy something. Um, for a couple reasons, not that so much that they're lazy, it's that they know they can get into trouble really, really quick. And so if you can, if you can stand on the shoulders of giants, then you should do that. You know, somebody's been there before. All right, so uh, let's, let's talk about the frequency of the master clock. Frequency master clock is uh, 10 megahertz, 10.24 megahertz. Um, and at first you just say, oh, it's 10.24 megahertz. Okay, that's just some random crystal they use, right? But if you're going to take numbers, let's say you're writing a computer program, you're taking numbers and you're gonna divide them and multiply them and stuff. Powers of two, you're in the binary world. So powers of two are powerful, right? It's easier for you to think in your head with powers of two. So you might want to start with a power of two when you divide it down by, by factors of two, because that's what this counter is going to do. It's going divide, to divide by factors of two because it's binary. So you start out with 1024. 1024 is, is a binary number. So they use 10.24 megahertz on purpose, right? So uh, yeah, that's that. I think that's about all for this data sheet that we need to, that we need to take a look at. My fingers are very dry this morning. Uh, let's see here. All right, just got back from walking M side dogs. I got his morning walk. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, draw some pictures here. Okay, so fundamentally we are going to generate a frequency and then compare it with the frequency that we have. But we're not going to compare it to say 140 megahertz. Remember that we've prescaled it by a factor of, of 64, right? And so that was about what 1.8 megahertz, something like that. Let's just call it, um, we'll just call it easy. We're just going to call it, we have a v, uh, VCO that we are going to control, okay? And we need to program that with, with some voltage, right? The output of the VCO is going to be, let's say, oh, let's just pick 144 megahertz, okay? And we're going to divide that by 64, all right? Let's get up my calculator. My, my HP28 died, died a terrible death, wouldn't add anymore, so it's... It's lived its 40 years, and <laughs> it's just not going to go any farther than that. Uh, so we're going to have 2.25 megahertz, okay? <clears throat> so we're going to divide, I'm oh, sorry. We're going to divide by 64, and we get 2.25 megahertz. All right. So we're going to bring that into this big magic chip, okay? We have 2.25 megahertz. And that's what we want. So we have to generate inside 2.2, 2.25 megahertz, all right? And we're gonna do that by 10.24 megahertz, and we're going to uh, multiply and divide until we get to 2.25 <clears throat> megahertz. And we are gonna set, we're gonna set this numerator and denominator and stuff with binary input. Okay, we're gonna have a whole bunch of binary input. Well, what's that binary input? Well, it's all these diodes. Remember all these diodes? They are just there to set ones and zeros. And so we're just gonna have zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero. Anyway, there's gonna be a whole bunch of numbers here that set certain frequencies. And you're gonna have to do some math and stuff figured out. But uh, the book, the, the Ramsey book, uh, was good at giving you a cheat sheet of, of how all of those things work. Um, let me show you what I've done. Let's see here. Okay, so these are all the ones and zeros. These are all the diodes that are in my radio. This is what somebody else had programmed. And there's all these ones and zeros, and there's 12 channels. So the, each row is a channel, so I can set 12 different channels. And these are all of the from here over is the binary code for synthesizing a frequency, okay? <clears throat> and uh, I did the math and calculated all of the frequencies this radio has programmed, 
And then there's a couple other bits here that tell you whether you have it's if it's a simplex frequency or it's a minus or a plus offset for a repeater, and and so those are separate. They they do some there's a separate circuit in the radio that handles the simplex and stuff, but yeah, there you go. Um, so you can figure it out, and uh, what you do is you generate uh, a voltage. Um, this generates a frequency, and then when you compare the two, it generates a, a difference voltage, not a, a comparative voltage. If are you too high or are you too low, and that comes out of the chip. So that gives you an idea of the of the digital programming that we're going to have. So that that goes that goes in here. This input here, this twelve, what twelve bits, maybe more. I forget. Anyway, lots of them, <laughs> lots and lots, lots of them. Okay, so we have this synthesizer inside that generates our twelve twelve dot two five, and then over here is a phase detector okay and uh so we're gonna we're gonna compare the phases that one goes in that one goes out okay looks at those two phases and then it generates two signals um and these two signals are digital signals they are going to be high and if these two things match they're going to be high now if the uh, frequency that you are, are creating over here is too low, then you'll start to get little pulses on, on this one, okay? And if it's too high, you're gonna get little pulses on, pulses on this one, okay? So two low pulses and two high pulses. So we can, say, we can say high and we can say low. So you're gonna get pulses out here if it's too high, pulses out here if, you're gonna, if it's too low, and you're going to run those into a difference amplifier. So if they're too high, you're going to run that into the plus, and if they're too low, you're going to run that into the into the minus side. And so this voltage will go up if it's too low, and it will go down if it's too high. Okay? So that's what this thing does over here. Uh, this thing's going to generate these pulses. We're going to turn those into voltages. We're just going to, going to average them. Okay, we're going to average them. And how do you average things? Well, this is the low-pass filter. Low pass. It almost kind of looks like an integrator, uh, the way it's uh, implemented in the in the circuit. It kind of looks like an integrator, but it's a low pass. So we're gonna we're gonna sum up these things, and we're gonna we're gonna start going up if it's too low, and we're start gonna go down if it's too high. Um, and so that's what that does. So anyway, I hope that makes it more clear what this chip is doing. It's a very complicated chip, um, but this is basically this is basically what's going on, right? <clears throat>